Hi there, this is Kelly Houston. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Please bear with me as I'm experiencing the joys of the season right now. Um, if this is your first time tuning in, I am a registered dietitian. And I help people to enjoy food again and to eat in a way that will nourish and fuel their brains and bodies so they can stop worrying about food and live a life they love. Today I want to ask how much of your time is spent thinking about food? In an ideal situation, we want to think about food <clears throat> just enough so we're sure that we're having appropriate meals and snacks that satisfy and satiate us. We want to think about food when we're hungry and then eat it until we are full and then be able to go on about our lives and think about other things, um, anything other than food. We have all the things to do. We don't want to think about food so little that we have no idea when, where, or what we will be eating throughout the day. That can lead to extreme overeating and discomfort once we finally do eat something. We also want to be aware if we're thinking about food constantly. People with eating disorders tend to think about food more often than the average person. Most people that don't have any type of disordered eating think about food about 15% of their day. And this is from Nita. Uh, the National Eating Disorders Association. People with anorexia nervosa who may not even eat anything at all are reported to think about food up to 115% of their day. And how is that even possible? It's reported that people with anorexia and other eating disorders actually dream about food as well. So this was first, um, possibly first described in the Ansel Key study, the Minnesota Starvation Experiment, which I've talked about before. The men in the study, they first went through a period of just normal eating, and their calorie intake was measured. And then for six months, their calories were cut in half. So uh, it was still around 1,600 calories a day, which by today's standards on a diet seems pretty liberal. There are plenty of diets that go, um, you know, lower than that. So it, even though it seemed like they were eating maybe a normal amount of calories, it was actually only half of what their bodies needed. And during the semi-starvation period, the men became obsessed with food. They would save recipes even if they didn't cook. They would talk about food constantly. They were noted to have dreamed of food. Uh, they would hoard any food that they came across. So I'm not here to say that if you think about food a lot that you have an eating disorder. Certainly I can't diagnose. Um, that's only one criteria and um, I'm not a diagnostician, but it is, they do tend to be uh, correlated. But if this video seems to hit a little too close to home, you might want to take a deeper look at your relationship with food. I have seen firsthand how extreme dieting without a diagnosed eating disorder can impact so many aspects of life. When I got married, a longtime family friend said she was unable to attend the reception. She had been on the time at a very, very calorie restricted diet and she did not want to have to be tempted by the food of the reception. Situations like that aren't somebody having willpower or being in control with food. In fact, the opposite is really true. The food is being in control of you. Luckily, help is available. If this post hits a little too close to home, please reach out. We can work towards eating in a way that fuels your brain and body and ultimately frees you from food obsession. Thanks for watching, guys.